Hello and welcome to Rule of Threes video review for Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 from CyberConnect 2 and Bendai. Actually, it's Naruto Shippuden, but whatever. Uh, this you want to go into the full title of the it's addition, <laughs> Shonen Jump Presents Naruto Shippuden, blah, 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 blah. And finally, so it's me, and as you can hear, we have special guest who hasn't been here since Borderlands 2. Bakamusha, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing good. All right, so this is the third game in the Ultimate Ninja Storm franchise. This is, I think, Naruto fighting game like 10 or something like that. So with that said, like we always start off with these, we always try to give a background on any of the previous games in a series. And for me, I have only played the original Naruto Ultimate Ninja game for like the PlayStation 2. That's it. It was okay. Uh, but I just couldn't get... I, I don't know. It just didn't work for me. Part of the character roster was a little small. The story campaign was kind of eh. Uh, how about you, Baku? Um, I, the first Naruto game I played was the, the, a GameCube fighter at a convention, but uh, I I do own the previous game, gener, uh, Generations, which I really enjoyed, and this... Yeah, so... And I'm also an avid fan of the manga and anime. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in terms of the actual anime, I, I read the manga. I stopped watching the anime because it's too much filler. But Yeah, most most fans of the series have. Same with Bleach before that was canceled. Yeah. So anyway, there's our backgrounds, at least the games and Naruto in general. So the story of Ultimate Ninja, or Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 is it takes place directly after the end of the Pain arc. For those of you who have not watched Naruto, it's really hard to give a guess, but it's after this one major fight. It's kind of the ending of the series is what the, this one kind of does. Is If you read the manga, you know that, uh, like I said, this also is the Ninja War. So it does the Ninja War and then kind of ends it as well in kind of its own little alternate ending. Since, if you, once again, if you read the manga, you know it's not over. This is... I actually liked how they did all the story and fights. I like some of the fights they added, just because it would have been boring if they didn't add them, and it would have, you know, just kind of carried on. And I'm glad they did a lot. And like I said, some of the fights in this are some of the best fights in the manga and the series, in my opinion. I'm really glad I got to play some of those. How about you, Baku? Yeah, I'm really... Um, having not watched the anime, some of these scenes I have not seen put to animation. And some of them were like really emotionally gripping you know that i i had to stop the game and i was done with the sequences just to be like just to cool down from the emotion um on the also other hand uh, naruto has kind of a problem with the manga has a problem with characters coming in they're being shown as you know really cool guys and then just the why these guys are cool but in a fighting game it really lets them shine as to why they're awesome uh one of it really shines mostly in my opinion with uh one of the Raikage's assistants, the guy with the sword, he, now I understand why he's so cool. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute and why they're kind of cooler in this game. So that's the storyline. Uh, in terms of the game modes, there's a campaign mode and then basically multiplayer, which is uh, a bit, a kind of a local free play and then an online fighting mode. Uh, first, I want to go into campaign. Uh, the campaign, like I said, follows the manga from the end of the Pain series to basically kind of just ending the series in general. At least that's what it seemed like. And while the campaign was good, and you know, it, it followed, you know, certain parts of the manga like word for word. Mm -hmm. I didn't like. That there's a free roam thing of, with it, and I didn't care for that. Um, it, in the previous game. Uh, the, the, apparently the free roam is a staple of this type of game, oh. um, especially for CyberConnect. But the last game, Generations, had a much stripped-down single player, where it's basically you choose a character, you play through a story, which is a series of fights. And it was dull, um, even with the not well-implemented overworld that's pretty much just go for my mission and get buy your items and shops. It still, to me, felt that much more investment compared to the old, the last game's version of it. Well, I mean, my major issue with it is, like, I, I don't mind free-roaming fighting games like this, but a lot of the areas you could go to were really, there was nothing there. It just yeah. felt like a lot of empty space, and you could talk to certain people, but there's they have a couple of quests in this game, and I kind of wish they would have added more mm -hmm. to the map, and I think that would have made it better for me. 
But because yeah. I just couldn't get over that is that it was just you know there's a lot of things on, on in this open world I can't really interact with anything. Right, I, I get get what you mean. I usually am not a stickler for you know game space and oh, how the game feels empty or not, but this game definitely did feel empty. It felt very PlayStation, PlayStation 2 y, where some games would just feel like, oh, these people are just standing around. Newer games have kind of tried to fix it. This game very much has that very much feel. They're just here to tell me words. Yeah. So the other thing with the campaign is you can collect things like uh, titles and cards that you can use, like, to make your multiplayer profile off of. And you, there's also, um, uh, what, what are they called? Um, Oh, the ninja history. The ninja right. history things. And those allow you to do certain fights from the past in the series. Mm. And I was really glad they implemented that. Yes. I would have been kind of ticked if they didn't. Yeah, um, most of the fights are kind of copy-paste from the last game, except for with newer uh, mechanics. Um, but those are kind of like the key fights. Like the first, like the Naruto-Sasuke fight at the, at the waterfall at the end of the world that that ended the original Naruto run that is so epic that every Naruto game has to have it. And just, then the Kakashi uh, Zabuza fight, stuff like that. But for the most part, they actually showed fights that were never in the franchise, such as Azuma's fight. Yeah. Well, like I said, I was just glad I freaking got my uh, Jiraiya vs. Pain fight back. Oh, yes. And the, the, the fight in the last game between Jiraiya and Pain wasn't as fun as the one in this one. Yeah, like I said, that's one of my favorite fights in the manga, and I'm really glad they added that. If they did it, I would have, you know, I would have been okay because I do like the arc that they're in for this game. But like I said, between that one and Naruto, that was first pain. Those are like my two favorite fights. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's the you get the ninja history by just uh, completing bonuses and finding things and doing random things, and it adds a little bit more uh, game, you know, you know, replay value and you know, actual game instead of just the main storyline. But the main storyline is actually really long because there's a lot of talking. Yeah, it, it feels like uh, people's criticism of Bleach sometimes is talking, 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 but Naruto always kind of had a, has that fight, flashback, fight, flashback, but pulls it off better than Bleach in my opinion. Yeah, but I still it's still too much in this game sometimes. Oh yeah, for a fighting game it's too much yeah. sometimes. Although the, sometimes. The, the longest sometimes time, they let their fist talk. Yeah, the one time that got really long, I mean, I'm fine with it because it's one of the more emotionally charged scenes, but I don't want to get into that. So the other thing in campaign mode is in certain fights, which are considered uh, more or less boss fights, there's what's called a um, decision making. What was what that one called? Ultimate yeah. decision. Yeah, ultimate decision. Ultimate where decision. To, where you get to choose between being a hero or being a legend. What a what a it, unlike Western games where it's a moral decision of am I going to be a good guy or, or you know Paragon or Renegade, good or bad, it's more or less am I going? It's more or less self-imposed challenge. Going hero is generally easier. A legend is harder. It does change some of the narrative. Um, and I haven't done. I've done hero, which is how this manga progresses. I've done legend, and I was going to do that in my in my, play, my next playthrough like later today. Yeah, see, I've been um, just doing legend. Oh, okay. So, um, did it change the storyline much? Uh, not really. It more or less added some of the gaps in. Oh, okay. Like if you're playing through, like, here. Because I did, I did a few heroes, because I went back and did it to see how they changed. And it more or less just kind of fills in a couple of gaps. Okay. But, um, and I don't know if they did this on all the heroes, but uh, the, like, secret scenes. Right. Uh, they changed a little bit in uh, the legend. So, anyway, that brings me to the next point, which is in, once again, in these... The, Ultimate decision. Some of them, some of them have quick time events at certain intervals during the fight. Once you get the enemy to a certain health point, these quick time events are rated how fast you do it. By doing them quickly enough, you earn stars. You get enough stars, you get a secret scene that usually gives you a little bit more kind of background or or sometimes that or sometimes unlocks uh, ninja pages as well. Yeah, ninja pages and gives you more points and stuff for ratings. And in terms of the implementation. If you don't like quick time events in your games, then you're not going to, you know, it's more of that. But they use them not, you know, they only use it at certain points that it didn't feel like it was overbearing. Right. To me, they felt, uh, except for one or two fights, the fights are versus things that you can't just have and how the game's combat is already set up of one person running around an arena versus another person running around an arena. Those fights are usually the ones that end in QTE. 
and they they felt like that needed to be done, and that's how that's that's how I how I like my QTE is when you're doing things the game mechanics don't normally allow. Yeah. Not not you know walking up to the guy and shooting him suddenly that's a quick time event instead of me pulling the trigger. <laughs> yeah, all the quick time events are stuff that you know obviously heavily scripted fight scenes. And they make sense why they have to be quick time events. Mm -hmm. But. Other than that, that's really it for campaign and differences between that and just normal fighting. So with that, we're now actually getting into the gameplay and actually tell you how this game works. So Ultimate Ninja Storm is a 3D arena fighting game, like we said. So the arena is, you can run around every, you know, in circles around enemies in a 3D environment. And you basically punch the crap out of each other, use shuriken, jutsu. Uh, the way they change it up a bit is you have a basic combo button that you just go up to them and start punching them or kicking them and does a, a set combo. There's what's called uh, chakra loading, which is you hold the button down, you charge chakra, and then by pushing it really fast and then hitting another button, it'll change up the attack. And then you can also use it to dash. Chakra loading, I like the, I like it. Uh, it's something that I've never really seen before in a game, but it added a little bit more strategy because you had to figure out, you know, the best time to charge and then when to load and use instead of just because you can't just load and use and miss because then you waste all your chakra. Um, there is a way to regain your chakra levels, but it requires you to just sit there, put your hands and you know the that you know pose that they do, and just be sitting there forever. And you're really vulnerable, but. Yeah. Well, that's the only way you can regain it, other than knocking them down and stealing theirs. But yeah, if you hit them hard enough, that they'll track a little burst out of them, and you can steal it from them. Yeah, but it adds. I mean, I found that you ha in order to really do that one, you have to knock them onto the floor and then do it. Mm -hmm. Just because if you just randomly did it, I mean, I just threw shurikens at anybody who started charging. Right. It's usually enough, um, especially if you chakra infuse your shurikens. Yeah. Then that, that stops them usually dead in their tracks. Yeah. So. Chakra is very important. It also allows you to change, uh, like I said, the normal combo into a ninjutsu. Each character has, what, three forms of jutsu or two? Yeah, the, they have uh, just normal jutsu, which is load, and then jutsu, which is they have one for the ground and one in the air. Yeah. Then, they, then their third one is uh, the ultimate. Their ultimate are their signature moves from the franchise, such as Chidori, whatever version, uh, Sasuke's um, various attack themed after Japanese gods, <laughs> um, Naruto's various versions of Rasengan, and so forth. Yeah, and since we're on that topic, I love the ultimate finishers. I thought they were really cool to watch. Yeah, and it's always dramatic to end a fight with an ultimate jutsu, especially in the campaign where they'll say something like, you know, I'll keep moving forward or something super shonen when they do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the cool thing is, is when you get their health down to low enough to where I'll finish them, it'll actually pop them and say, oh, you can finish them with the ultimate, finisher. Yep. which is a nice little strategic thing because, first of all, you know if you hit them with it, you win, but they also know, the enemy now knows, oh, if they hit me with any their ultimate jutsu, I am dead. Right. So you have, that causes you to kind of either panic a little bit and or play a little defensively, or you go, you know, make sure they can't ever do it. Right. Which in the case, I found it more useful to substitute my way out of everything which we'll get into a second right so i did like that um but yeah the moves the ninjutsu is really cool uh yeah so the next one i want to go into is the substitution substitution right. is i mean there's a normal block and then there's substitution jutsus uh right. if you time it right you will replace yourself with a substitution and appear behind them so if people you know are spamming circle and you time it right they'll just you know continue punching air and, you know, you can totally load up a Jutsu and hit them with it if they're not paying attention. Right. So it adds uh, a little bit, but you can only do it so often. Right. And it, uh, the bar refills the more you take damage. Yeah. It, it refills very, very slowly, but it only refills taking damage for noticeably. Um, and, yeah, there is a kind of caveat for the attacker. The attacker may be wailing on you and you substitute out. And they can cancel, like many modern um, fighting games. They can cancel their combo and form up. But usually, uh, this game's a little bit more casual, so you're not talking like modern Street Fighter split-second attacks. So if your opponent who substituted is quick enough, they can get on your butt. But it's really just skill at that point. Yeah. So the next thing I want to go into is um, the Ninja Tools is before every fight you can choose between a list of things you bought and I think can you only buy in the campaign or can you buy them in the multiplayer? 
Um, I wasn't paying uh, you, In multiplayer, when you choose a character, they have the set items already in there. Okay, so you can, you can only buy the new stuff. Them. Okay. Right. In the campaign, you can customize it. Right. Um, and here, they gave a huge boost to ninja items because in the last game, they were just kind of there. I mean, they, they when, when they would heal you, it would be small amounts. And the, the attack items did very little damage. Yeah, this one they seem to want to make sure that the ninja tools were useful. Hmm. Which is good, because if you have something... If you want to implement something into your game, in my opinion, you don't want to just do it just to have it. You want to make sure it works and that people would want to use it. Right. Uh, this one, yes, I wanted to use my ninja items at the right time because it gave me a benefit and usually helped me win. Mm -hmm. Versus it sounds like older ones, it didn't really matter. Right. It mattered, like... Like quick reflexes matter you know split second difference but it, in the overall game of things if you're getting wailed on there's getting that little bit of health is yeah, not really going to help yeah. all right and i think that's it for basic combat did i miss anything no nope, that's that's it yeah so the last thing i want to go into is the character roster for the most part and the character roster is huge in this game it's pretty much every ninja ever introduced in naruto living or dead um, yes um, there are some uh, some characters that are left out, but they're extraneous. They're like they're characters that either in the background of the manga or only have limelight in the anime filler. And that was kind of a problem, with, especially with the GameCube uh, Naruto fighters, is the fact that their rosters are mostly made up of anime filler characters. But the Ninja Storm series actually has from the manga, and yeah, this this roster is huge. Yeah, and normally if you. Huge roster means that multiple characters will play the same. In this case, there's only one or two characters that really fought the same way, mm -hmm. which is amazing because, like I said, it's like almost 52 characters or something like that. Right. Um, talk about multiple, so many characters feeling bland. That was my problem with the first Tekken tag, is the fact that because characters were literally just, well, this guy, this guy in the next game with a different reskin, it really was apparent in Tekken tag. I don't know if they fixed that in the new one. No. But they didn't. Okay, but this game almost completely avoids that. The only time you get sameness is vague sameness, such as Gar and his father, both sand users, so they kind of feel the same. Yeah, but I mean that's to be expected. But I'm, it's still amazing about the amount that they have in there, and very all of them right. pretty much have their own unique fighting style. And if they are similar, their jutsus, especially their ultimate jutsus, are what set them apart. Yeah. Which are, once again, like we said earlier, that's what makes some of the, like, characters in, the, if, you know, once again, if you met, read the manga, like, oh, eh, make them really awesome, because that's, the cutscenes for these things are really cool to watch. Right. Um, just, it really brings, like I said, because I don't watch the anime, it brings the universe a little bit more closer, and I don't have to deal with filler arc. Oh, and I totally forgot, there's one other thing we forgot to talk about, and that's Awakening Modes. Oh, yes. Awakening Modes. something mode. that, I, that I rarely do... Yeah, same here. That's why I forget about it. So Awakening right. is a one-time burst move. It will put you into a super state, and you can do awesome things, but it only lasts for a short time, and once you use it and it's over, you go into a downward spiral. All your like stats and damages yeah, you're, start your going down. Yeah, your health is permanently lowered for the rest of the fight, and your chakra meter is permanently lowered, and you only get like two or three substitutions from that point on. Yeah. But the burst of power is game-ending. Unless the unless your opponent is, is really lucky, more or less, you you will usually end them. Um, however, because you're hitting so much damage, they'll usually end up in awaken mode, and then it's just two people battling awakening, which can be pretty epic for some characters. Yeah, but it's like I said, it's a nice little kind of instant burst. But I like how you know, if you use it, you get benefits. But if you fail to finish them off within the you know basically whenever you do your awakening, you suffer for it. Right. So you got to be very careful about it. You can't just go, bam, oh, I'm going to beat you up and then win. Or, you know, towards the end of a match, bam, I'm going to hurry and kill you before you kill me. Because if you fail, you're going to kill yourself in the long run. Right, and that's that's also what typifies this franchise, is they're really good at implementing concepts in the manga and putting them into a game that in other games would be a central concept. Here they have so many, but they all work really well. And CyberConnect deserves praise for that. All right. And so that's it. So now we're going to give it our verdicts. I'll let Bakamusha go for... Oh, actually, just as a reminder, for those of you who've never listened to us, uh, we don't do a buy, rent, or a, a point system because I find points arbitrary. We do do a buy, rent, pass. Buy meaning we think it's worth the full tax price that is currently on it. 
because it's just that fun and awesome and we think you know you should buy it renting is you know it's still good but you may want to rent it or wait for it to go like 50 percent off or just on sale pat spins is a complete waste of our time and you should burn this when you get it burn it with such fire. as colonial marines Hi, did you watch the review that we yes, did now? yeah it's... yeah anyways burn it anyway so uh baku go first well um I would definitely say it's a buy if you're a Naruto or, fight, or just and a fighting game fan, especially if you're if you're kind of tired of the more traditional e, uh, Asian fighters such as Tekken or um, Soul Calibur, even Street Fighter. This is definitely a change up. It is more casual. If you that, that yeah, um, it's a pass if you can't stand Naruto quick time events or casual fighters, but if you if you really like, if you like fighting games in Naruto, this is, why aren't you already own this? Right. And then as for me, I give it a solid rent. While I do enjoy the game itself, uh, like I said, the openness of the, you know, campaign and just it being empty was kind of, eh. Um, if, if some of the fighting is a little, like I said, it's a little slower for me, but I mean, if you're a hardcore Naruto fan, this game's perfect for you. I'm not going to lie. This game's great for that. But for me personally, you know, it, I would probably wait till it went on sale. So I, I give it a rent. So with that, you have our verdicts. Uh, a buy from Bakumusha and a rent from me. And then a pass if you just don't like Naruto. Yeah, that's just pretty true for most franchise games, though. Yeah, I mean, if, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Most of you who are listening to this, if you've heard of Naruto and don't like it, you probably just, you know. Already made up your mind. Yeah. However, if you do like the series, this is actually a pretty good, you know, uh, rating for it. So thank you, Baku, for uh, joining me today. You're welcome. And uh, I don't know when this video is going up, so I can't tell you what the next game we're doing is because this is a side review. This could be posted whenever I finish up with the editing. Um, so keep an eye out on any reviews. And make sure to leave a comment below on uh, anything you've heard, if you have the game, what you enjoy about it, if you know we changed your mind about buying it, any anything in general, just post it below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel above. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, and go to our website at rulo3.com to you know get updates, uh, sign up for updates and stuff. You can do that over at the side, or you should be able to do them at the side or in the account, or somewhere on this page, on our front page. And that's it. So thanks for listening, and always remember to trust in the rule of three.